camion de livraison. Et puis j'atterris ici. Oh, c'est incroyable. Hein T'entends ça, chérie Ben oui, c'est fou. Well, good morning, everybody, and um, look, thanks for inviting me, and um, I'm not going to tell you how to do it, I'm just going to share my story, and as you see by that, it's all about communicating your story and, and telling your story effectively to get you out of sort of trouble and get you moving. Can I start off by acknowledging the traditional owners, the iwi, and um, to our hosting mayors, um, Rachel and Richard, thanks, I call them R squared now. Uh, to Lawrence, to you and Malcolm and the association, thanks for the invitation, I did start the panic last year but I start to sort of understand that we still had an ANZAC's treaty and uh, the relationship between Australia and New Zealand has always been very strong, unless we talk about sport. Folks, um, look, this morning I just want to sort of share with you a, a journey that's been incredible for me, that I've learned about what local government's all about, I've learned about politics and I've learned about businesses and I've learned about community, and guess what, I've, I've started to realise there's no difference. You know, that we all get involved in our own little things and sometimes we drift away from where we're supposed to be. Like I arrived here on, um, on Friday, it was wonderful. I arrived in Auckland, I met some people. Uh, I came here yesterday and I, I played golf with Richard, but I started to realise what your, you know, your, your theme for today, we are New Zealand. Are you? We are NZ or are you 78 different local authorities? You know, sometimes our own egos and our own parochialism, we start to look at our own little boundaries, our own little picket fence. You know, when I arrived, I actually, when I went to Auckland and I've, you know, I've come here, I've just looked at the beauty. At not one stage did I wonder when I drove through the authorities where the boundaries started and finished. At no stage did I see any boundaries. All I saw was a beautiful countryside and landscaping. And sometimes, when we're so close to it, it's like when you go on holidays in Queensland, how many times do you drive around Queensland saying, I wonder who the mayor is here? <laughs> you, you don't give a rats, do you? You know, so it's sometimes what we've got to understand, and it's just great because the, the theme is we are NZ, and that's what you've got to do. And I'm not going to mention that swear word, amalgamation, but I will say one thing, that amalgamation in Queensland, that, that, that if you do it right, it does work. And the key is not looking at the boundaries, but looking at the community of interest, because sometimes there are communities that are shopping in that area and in part another area, and that's what what amalgamation is all about, is getting that community of interest, getting that people activity moving and cities moving. Because sometimes, you know, that we've got um, one particular area that belongs to Brisbane, but everybody goes to their schools in Ipswich. But guess what? They don't get sporting bursaries, cultural bursaries, they can't use their tips, and they want to be part of it. Because they're so far on the outskirts, so it really does need to be adjusted and, and thought about like that. So, what I wanted to do is just, just mention that to you. So don't rule it out. And you don't have to rule it in. But just make sure communities of interest and people and what's best for NZ is full consideration. And, you know, to me that um, my city was um, uh, Ipswich and we had uh, Morton Shire around. It was like a donut with a donut in the middle. And we've amalgamated and we're now the strongest city in the country. We're the fastest growing. And I'll tell you one thing about Ipswich, if you knew it, 15, 20 years ago, we had the highest unemployment, the highest crime rate. And our kids would not even mention they lived in Ipswich, right? And they were leaving in droves, and, and I won't tell you about my daughter, but I'll tell you about it later. So, um, let's start looking at what we've got here. There we are, Ipswich of 1991. They, someone invented a Monopoly game, no matter where you landed on it, you went to jail. How good was that? <laughs> they, the world of two-head city. Our temperature's always too hot or too cold. We've heard every joke. In actual fact, I'm still trying to find the person who created that joke about us having two heads. Because I want to congratulate them. I want to congratulate them because it made us twice as smart as everybody else. What this organisation desperately needs is change. Easily erasable. Camlin whiteboard markers. The easiest thing for me to say was change, but trying to tell the community we needed to change, mate, 
That was one of the hardest things. Because everybody gets so set in their ways that they just don't want to change. So what I had to do is, what I'm going to go through, some of the strategies on how to bring the people on board, how we changed here. And on my suit is a, um, is a little pin, we call it the pride pin. And you'll, I'll talk about it later. But it's a, it's a flag of, of Ipswich and a flag of Australia. Pride in your city and pride in your country. And I gave every kid in the city one and we start to engage in having pride in your city. This was us, we, um, we started to be, um, you know, the, we had wool mills, we were strong in the rail, we were, we were probably one of the best manufacturing cities in, you know, in the country and all of a sudden all those industries disappeared. And when I, when I got elected in 91, guess what I had to do? I had to start thinking about what's going to happen because I knew in 20 years our industries were going to close. So it's just like, you know, when um, you guys have got, you know, Richie McCall here, the, the, the captain of the All Blacks. You know, you imagine his coach. You know, what makes a good footballer and a great footballer? Well, I'll tell you the difference. A good footballer does everything the coach tells them. They tackle hard, they play hard, and at the end of the game, you've done well. But what's the difference between a great footballer? A great footballer doesn't just follow the ball and does what the coach... They can think about where the game's going. They, knew, they know in the ruck they can move the ball out here and all of a sudden, two moves later, they know they can score over here. That's the Richard McCalls. And that's what you've got to do at Cities. You've got to predict where the game is going. It's easy to follow the ball. And that's what Ipswich did. We knew in 91, well, I did, because I'll never, I'll never forget this. I just got elected and I went into council and I said, mate, I want to set up an economic development department. What are you talking about? You know, they thought I was from Mars. Because no one ever rang up council about economic development or, or went to a politician, thank you for what you're doing in job creation. Guess what? Barking dogs, footpaths, going to fix my pothole. I was going to become the councillor for fixing potholes. And I said, I'm getting out of here. I don't know anything about put, 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 potholes. And I'll tell you, one, one of my councillors was so intelligent. He said, I've got a great idea. Why don't we give everybody in the community bags of bitumen to carry in their car so when they see a pothole, <laughs> they can stop it off. How good is that? Anyway, so finally I got a subcommittee and we looked at where the job generations are in the world. And we knew that information technology, so that's when we, we set up our own, if you look at my Paul P. at Gill, we set up our own ISP called Global InfoLinks and we gave every school connection to it. And we started to educate the community about IT and that's what happened. We got the universities, we got a few other things and I can tell you something, when our last coal mine closed about six years ago, no one even knew it closed. Because we'd already started all the manufacturing, which I'll go through, we predicted where the game was going. So if you're going to do economic development, that's the other reason why you don't get involved in economic development, because what happens is that there's no votes, because it takes about four or five years to get results. And that's why people like to do the little infrastructure things where people curb and channel footpaths. And I told people, mate, those things will happen, but let the engineers do that. They're, they're better at it than I am. Let me provide the leadership to get the money to do those things better. And the, the thing about it, you have to educate your community what my role is. And that's what started to happen. And they're the four key principal things that I educate the community nearly every day. Jobs and industry, education, building communities and lifestyle. That live, work and play can become a reality, not just a key statement. And people have got to see, and more importantly, the role they play. And as we go along, I'll tell you how I got them all working so I can sit back and come to New Zealand and play golf. Because my office runs better when I'm not there, because all the staff know what the, the position is of this council is and how development is so important, how quick development's got to happen, because if they don't, they're not going to have wages and our city's not going to grow. 1991, we, I got elected to council, we set up the Office of Economic Development, we started to develop partnerships. One of the things I found, I said to one of the council, I said, why don't we work with the Chamber of Commerce? Oh, mate, you can't do that, they could run against us. Yeah? And that's, it was that fear factor against other organisations. I hear it all the time. I said, let them run against us. But if you're doing a good job, they won't run against you. And that's why I started to provide funding for those organisations because every time I gave money to those organisations, get back, I got it back a hundredfold. One good example was Rotary and Lions. I said to the council, I'm going to have uh, some funding for all these community organisations so they don't have to do chook raffles. They can apply to council to get the materials they need to do things in the park that are, are related to us. And the, the engineer at the time said, well, how are we going to afford that? I said, well, 
Well, it's cheaper than you doing it because I've got to pay wages when you do it. And he started to think about it. No one ever thought about it. So I called it the community dollar. When I put one dollar into the community, guess what? I got back a hundredfold. So we started to grow. But more importantly, they all, they all felt part of the ownership of the city. So it's just not me building the city. It's not council. It's the whole community. And guess what? When I involved the young people in skateboards, the graffiti dropped. Because they held ownership. And I'll tell you what, if council builds something, they, they graffiti, if they build it, don't let anybody touch it, I can tell you. So this is, um, I was elected in mayor and I, and I knew that, that we had to start changing things and it, it took me probably uh, 10 years before I became the deputy mayor. Now the economic development department of, of Ipswich City Council is the largest and the most effective. And Alan Brown, he's come over because he's come over here on holidays. I employed a Kiwi. You guys didn't want him, I took him. He's the best thing that ever happened. Put your hand up, Alan, shake. Go talk to him, he's here for holidays. He's, um, he's doing a great job and he wanted to come out today and help me and, um, but Alan, um, but thanks for coming over to Australia. We're going to keep you now. now I talked about good cities and, and great cities, as I said before, you know, the global info links and, and information technology. You know, because the key for that, my daughter Lisa gave me the clue. I was sitting there, um, I was probably just being elected, and I said, she was finishing grade 11 at girls' grammar school. I said, darling, what are you going to do next year? She said, I can't wait to leave this hole. I was president of the chamber, I was this, I was that. I want to slap her. How dare you talk about our city like that? And it went on for about two weeks and my wife, as wives do, she said, why don't you shut up and listen to her? And being a good father, I said, okay, you've got one minute. <laughs> anyway, to cut a long story short, I said, okay, what's, what's the issue? She said, what are you talking to me? Why are you blaming me? Because I want to leave. You're going to get rid of me anyhow like you've done with every other kid. Because there's no jobs here, Dad. There's no education. What, what do you want me to do? Just sit here and hold your hand and look at you. Mate, she was 100% right and I was 100% wrong and that's when my journey started. And that's where now I can report and tell you that 20 years later our age demographic is now the lowest in Queensland. We're at 32, the state average is 37 and guess what, in the next two years I'm going to be 29. Our kids are coming home, young families are coming and we've got now the fastest growing area in the country and we're doubling in population in the next 15 years. You know, people say, how are we going to handle the growth? Will you show me a business out there that doesn't want growth? Cities are the same. You've got to encourage growth, but you've got to give people a reason to come to your city. It's not because Paul Pasali's the mayor. Who gives the rats? You know, you've got to show people that your city is worth saying, I live in Ipswich. You know, and New Zealand, I can tell you, you've got one of the best countries I've ever seen. I can tell you something that you've got here that you probably don't realise, but your customer service, and I've been to a lot of places around the world, but the customer service in New Zealand, the way the staff in every hotel and wherever I've been, is second to none. It's the friendliest I've ever seen. It's fantastic. You should explore that. It is absolutely fantastic. Sometimes when you live here, you take it for granted. You take things for granted, but I'm telling you, it's one of the things that's really blowing me away. This is uh, some of the things that it's very important that I create a sense of community, employment, education, recreation, health, you know, and I do get 90% of the vote, right? Because I don't listen to the morons. You know the 10% of whinges? <laughs> we all got Rathbay Assembly and these dickheads ring you up and say, what are you going to do about the aircraft noise? I said, why don't you shift? <laughs> Mate, you know, to me, the defence base is the best thing we've got in the city. It's injecting millions and millions of dollars and this person moves into our city and wants me to close down the aircraft noise. You know, and instead of saying, when you see someone in uniform, which I tell everybody, go and shake their hand. Thank them for the democracy we have. And you know, thank them for, because of their deployments going to, to overseas, being shifted all around the country, no one. And so only a month ago I did a, a, you know, a freedom of the city where 2,000 troops marched down the streets with their guns blazing, the planes going overhead, and I gave every troop a, a coin that says, thank you for the service and the sacrifice. And you know what? Saying thank you to people is so important. And businesses. Alan and his team go around businesses saying, how can I help you make a profit? I'm in trouble at the moment. Say, so you're too close to businesses. You shouldn't be helping make a profit. Well, put up your hand if you want to make a loss. <laughs> it is not a dirty word. Because when businesses make profit, they get involved, they sponsor community activities, they um, employ people, and if every small business in this country can employ one person, you've got no unemployment. 
And that's what we've got to start thinking about, help small businesses, and that's why we've got a small group, and if you want to talk to Alan or you want to send me an email, we'll give you all the information that, that we've got in our economic development, and we'll give it to you for free. There's nothing that I would have, that I've done, that I don't want to share for people, because this is a great planet, and the relationship we have between the two countries is that second to none. But that's the most important person. You guys. You guys have got to be seen to be proactive in your area. Also, have, make sure you develop that relationship with your neighbours. Develop that relationship then as a, as a, as a state and then as, as a country. And as you do that, things will start to develop. Because what happens at the moment, that the general public get um, confused. One of the things, I, I've got a team of councillors and they've been elected for three terms without any change. The experience of my council is over 250 years because the people trust us and keep re-electing us. I'll tell you one of the things we did. We don't argue in public. We, every two weeks we get in a closed room, we shut the doors and windows and they go for it because they're all division, they're all fighting for money, money and they're all doing it. But publicly and in council meetings, we bring the kids in and we congratulate each other. Because I'll tell you what, I saw something this morning. It was um, an article about... Um, some development where a council was complaining about, it was, um, it was in a paper this morning about some uh, development and he was complaining about it. And guess what? That could have been a, a major announcement, but one person now has turned it into a negative. And I'll tell you the worst thing is that's now because of the internet, that gets seen all around the world. And you know what? Sekisui House, the largest house builder in Japan, is in Ipswich doing a master plan community. Right? They built 60,000 homes last year. They were in Ipswich. Guess how they found Ipswich? Everybody gave me the credit for bringing Sekasui House. I didn't even know who Sekasui, I thought it was a food. <laughs> they found me. And they found me because they got the Michigan University in the US to do a global search on where they should be investing next. And some of the things they told me when they did the research, they looked at stability of the council. They looked at all those things, the press releases and all those things. So all those people that are out there to get elected and think they can get their little headline are actually hurting their city. Right, they're hurting. If you want to have an argument, you know, they think, oh, you know, because the, the media loves to, you know, and that's their job. So don't blame the media. They only report what you say. Sometimes. <laughs> I do like you. But, you know, to me, understand that. You know, I run my city. We're, we're a board of directors. We've got 180,000 shareholders. We get together. We have our discussions. We have our arguments. But when we go, we're one city. And that's so important because, you know, our council meetings take 20 minutes. That's because we spend 15 minutes talking to the kids that we bring in from the schools. Because we have committee meetings as well, which is the week before. Each of the councils has got their own chair and they get a, an hour to discuss all the issues and they go through council. Because that's a process. And because the, we, we, we don't argue, sometimes the media don't even show up anymore. Right, the, they take our press releases. Being mayor, it's not a title, it's not a position, it's something we all share. It's a responsibility, that's why you're here. You're here to learn, you're here to share, you're here to network, you're here to help each other. But I can tell you, sometimes in councils, you know, we just get so complicated. That's why the relationship between me and my CEO is to make processes simple. Sometimes we don't make them so simple and sometimes bureaucracy and councils, we, we sit there debating things and we forget the end result. And here's a good example. To you. From today, dialing 999 won't get you the emergency services. And that's not the only thing that's changing. Nicer ambulances, faster response times and better looking drivers mean they're not just the emergency services, they're your emergency services. So, remember the new number. Yeah. So remember that responsibility and leadership. These are some of the things that I, you know, love to, to um, share with our communities. I meet with the, all the church services, all the leaders in the community. 
I think I've got one next week where we I brief on WhatsApp. I meet with all the taxi drivers. I meet with all these people, and every time I meet with them, I give them a job. I give them a job, and say, look, because you imagine these church leaders. You want to put an ad in the paper, or you want every minister on a Sunday to preach what's happening in the city, and taxi drivers make sure they know what's happening in the city. Because I, it, uh, Jeff Kennett gave me this idea because I got a taxi and he had a barbecue with them, and he, he's just briefing them. Because I know with taxi drivers, what's happening over there, mate? Oh, mate, this is happening. They get the wrong result because they heard it from the other person. So give them the right thing and you can get it fixed up and you stop all the leadership. Mate, we've got to know where we're going. If we don't know where we're going, this is what could happen. You know, and um, the other thing I, I, um, I know about leadership is... is are you worried, Lawrence? No no. no, no, he knows where he's going, okay? All you little ducks, all you little ducks out there. But leadership is, you know, when um, things happen, you know, and I get infiltrated with it's people trying to investigate you and all the other things that happens in your life because people just want to have their go at you. You've got to make sure that if you sniffle, your whole organisation could get pneumonia. So you've got to make sure that you don't show that face to the community. You've, you've got to be that positive person all the time. When I go out there, it's so important for me to represent that mayor and not, you know, that, that style of leadership. And I've had to change over the years. Mate, you know what? One of the things I, um, I had a restaurant once and I said to my, my manager, I don't know what's wrong. I kept sacking staff. I said, I don't know what's wrong with all these people. She said, look in the mirror. And she was 100% right because you kept trying to employ yourself. And one thing I've learnt in life, that everybody has a different way of going to point A. You know, so allow people to get there the, the right way. Just make sure we understand where we want to end up and, and allow people to have that flexibility. But, but you have to filter the bad news to an organisation and make sure. Not, and after every council meeting, guess what I do? I put out a newsletter to all the staff to let people know straight away before they read it in the newspaper. Every press release, my staff get it before the media. Because I'll tell you why, what happens with the media. It's not your newspaper. They'll just take little bits out of it, right? And they don't get the full story. And by giving it to the staff, they read the full story. And guess what? You've got, I've got 1,500 people then. When someone asks them out in the street what's happening, they read in the paper, they can tell them the truth. So they're just little things. And it's just communication with your staff. Economists fear the collapsing Chinese economy will put 300,000 Australians out of work this year. It's another blow for Queensland with the finances of all our key trading partners declining rapidly. It's the great stall of China and Japan and South Korea and Queensland relies heavily on them. The combination of what's occurring in countries in Asia is of major concern to all of us. It's likely the state will run into the red soon. We know that the circumstances are changing very quickly. Uh, we will be uh, making uh, you know, public statements about that at an appropriate time. Today, this warning to Queensland from a leading economist. It's not going to slow notably overnight, but you can tell now that there are problems down the track. A new forecast out today predicts 300,000 more jobs will be lost nationwide this year and unemployment will jump to 7.5%. Access Economics believes we haven't seen anything yet. The next step is a big fall in profits and a big increase in unemployment. Uh, we are in the eye of that storm. There have been big job losses in mining and retail already. And as Seven News revealed last night, master builders predict 6,000 tradesmen will be out of work within a year. The commercial building sector is struggling. Even Oscorp, the developer of the 79-storey Vision Tower in Brisbane CBD, is in deep discussions with its banks. It says at this stage, the project will go ahead in full. And just when you thought the housing market may be steadying, this, from a leading property analyst. I think uh, we could get a further 15% um, drop over the next 12 months. But they're smiling at Ipswich. The council's convinced Australian pharmaceuticals to build a $22 million distribution centre there. It'll create 200 jobs. Positive attitude all the time. We don't even know about the financial meltdown in Ipswich. We've um, treated ourselves as a, a special case where everything's positive and things are happening. Neil Warren, 7 News. <laughs> We're in the eye of a storm. 200,000 people going to lose. Who's going to invest? Do you know, after that, I've got about 15 inquiries. Everybody thought we were a different country. You know, and people just wanted some positivity. And, but that's what happened during that global. Yeah, so we did have some, some issues, but you, you keep that to yourselves. And that's the trouble with a lot of these things that, that happen in life and what happens in your council. You've got to be there to promote your council. 
You've got to be there to promote your region. You've got to be there to promote your country because if you don't, things like that just really hurts people. No one's going to invest money. No one's going to spend. Everybody's going to. You imagine all those people saying, well, people are going to lose their jobs. You know, you know if, if I'm going to get efficiencies in my council, I don't put out a press release and tell people that they're going to put out, lose their jobs. We get the efficiencies in council and we do it internally. Because when that happens, it sends alarm bells and shockwaves. So if a council sends a little ripple, guess what's going to happen by the time it gets to the, to the, to the little small businesses? It creates a tidal wave. And the people then say, we've got to save, we've got to save, we're not going to spend, we're not going to spend. And guess what? We've got a whole major problem happening. That's Campbell Newman and I, he's the Premier now, but he was the Lord Mayor of Brisbane. One of the things I did. Because everybody thought, I got, someone wrote a letter to the editor because they saw me shopping in Brisbane. I thought I was going to be tied to the stake in the mall. I didn't realise you couldn't work outside. So everybody kept seeing these boundaries. What they didn't realise, in those days I had 120,000, there was 1.6 million people in Brisbane, I could get the shop here. So I had to have a function, we got, we got um, 300 people together and we broke down the picket fence between Ipswich and Brisbane. And the funny part about it, we had bits and pieces and wood all over the place and the Civic Hall staff came up to me and said, how are we going to clean up this mess? And I said, get me a felt pen. And I signed it. I got Campbell to sign. And I said, mate, this would be worth a lot of money one day, wouldn't it? And everybody raced and picked up all the wood. And I said, that's how we clean up the mess. <laughs> so, you're still, was, and for Ke poor old Campbell, he was still signing there an hour later. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of communities and we're doing a lot of development. I always say to people, we're not subdividing land. Everything we do is creating a community. It's got to have a, a cause and effect. You know, everybody says the development over there and everybody says the developer, he must be making money. It's tough out there. It is tough out there. And councils have got to create the environment. No developer has ever asked me to do the wrong thing. What they want is quick time frames. They want things to happen quickly and not be stuffed around by someone who goes on holidays or, or these information requests. I was getting people, you know, young planners giving information requests. They don't realise every one of those information requests was costing thirty or forty thousand dollars to do, and we've done about ten of them for the same spot. Can you believe that? You know, it, it doesn't matter. They said we need a new one. Well, that's all changed. I can tell you because you know it reminded me when I became mayor. I always wanted to be the mayor of Ipswich, and I got elected. Guess what? And I sat there in two thousand and four, and I got sworn in on the first of April, April Fool's Day. I'll never forget that. The first thought that went through my head, what does a mayor do? <laughs> I didn't know. So for two days, I was signing all these papers and I said, I don't want to do this, this is boring. <laughs> and I said to the girl, she said, you have to do it. I've looked after four mayors. I said, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I went back the next day, can I ask you one question? Has it worked? No. <laughs> well, we're not going to do it that way anymore. So I changed the whole process and I made the role of mayor more like a, a, you know, a, a civic leader, someone, a marketing manager. I don't know, I don't want to get involved in the engineers. The engineers know better than engineering than I do, the CEO. So I formed a partnership with the CEO. It's like the relationship between Lawrence and, and you know, Malcolm. It's got to be a good partnership. It's like the, the political arm and the operational arm. They have to be the same. They have to go. They'll do things differently because they have different agendas. But it'll be the same result. And that's what we did and, and that's what's starting to happen. We've got now Springfield Land Corporation where it's um, a, a, a master plan community. And guess what? Before we did that, we went out with the developers and other people. We flew all around the world to look at all the best practices. You know, and the media. If, they, if anybody was going to come to me and say, you've been on a junket, I was going to slap them. Have you ever been to these places? It's not a junket going from room to room and things like that. They just don't understand. But I tell you what, we brought back the world's best practices and that's what's happening. Because I said to the people of Ipswich, we are not going to accept second best anymore. And that's what you've got to do. And Ripley Valley now is, is the Sekasui house and it'll be another population of 120,000 people there. And um, I was telling people, because we had a few false stars, and I said, Ripley, believe it or not, which is a... <laughs> this is one of the things that I love. Well, I, uh, this is, I, I won't tell you which is Ipswich. It's the one, big one in the middle, but industrial land. I've got 43% of all the industrial... All those coal mining sites that people laughed about, I turned them into industrial land. And now I've got 14 sites and um, people now can come here because I tell you what keeps families together? Jobs. It's more than being without work. It actually affects the whole family when the, when the breadwinner hasn't got work, when you can't pay your bills. So understand all the social problems and all the other things that we're getting lumbered with. And no offence to state and federal governments, but when they get efficiencies, they cut out programs and guess who's the silly mug that's got to pick them all up? Because the local government is at the, 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 we're sort of the, the low 
end. And that's where everybody comes, you know, to, to, to get help. And uh, in Queensland, I don't know what the figures are here in Australia, but um, the f we collect 4% of all the rates and charges, state government 16%, and the federal government 80%. They've got to work in partnership with local government. Well, we can do what we do with 4%, not about, how good is that? You've got to let the community know who's got all the money, and it ain't us. You know, we're strict, and you know, I'm sick and tired of people complaining about rates. What they get for rates, like you pay your car insurance or your house insurance, and you've got a million reasons, and it's more expensive. With your rates, you pay two to $3,000 a year, and you turn your waters on, you press a button, a series disappears, your garbage bin comes, you've got all the libraries and services, and you get more things than I've ever seen. Tell them to stop complaining about it. Or try to do the services in themselves. So that's what we're doing, is educating the people what they get for their rates and how they can be part of it. And these are all the industrial sites we've got. Technology. Now, I do Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, Facebook. I don't even know how it all works, but you have to do it. And you get you've met good people and bad people on it, but that's the way technology is going. But don't rely on technology all the time. Get out and meet the people like I do with chat times and, and get to organisations to let them know that you're part of the process. To let them know I've got grants that I have available, community organisations, and the community organisation has got to show me how it's going to benefit the city, like the um, Toastmasters. I give them you know, $5,000 in prize money, to, but their, their speeches have got to be, what do you love about your city? And you've got to get the young kids involved. And a Toastmaster can't um, enter. They've got to go find a young person and train them to speak for them. Guess what? They're developing their partnership. Start thinking outside the square. And don't rely on communication. Because if you rely on communication all the time, this is what's going to happen. Emma. Huh? Emma. Emma. Every day it's getting on my nerves. Emma. Oh, I'm Emma. Emma. The reason I show those clips, you'll remember the clips and you won't remember me, so. But just remember that when you're making a decision, don't make it too complicated. But Granny here, this is just great. There we go. Positive results. So there's Jamie Oliver. You know, if it wasn't for us and being positive, Jamie Oliver wouldn't come to Australia. And guess what? His, his first thing was Ipswich. There's the second Sui house. Being positive, because I've only got about 11 minutes to go, but you've got to make sure you don't blame everybody. Just get there, be positive, and, and, and put out that message all the time. Work with your media. You know, the benefits of everybody working together, there it is. The city grows, jobs are created, and people see that, you know, that you're not blaming someone. I think a lot of people will always want to blame someone else. And a good example would be that the during this health department fiasco with the, with the payroll, the government was blaming someone every day. Well, the same thing happened to me. <laughs> we had a situation where our rates went out and we made a simple little mistake. A thousand people got an extra thousand dollars on their rates. I don't know why they'd complain. <laughs> and you know, people, when they get an extra thousand dollars on their rates, the first thing they do, they say, sorry, you made a simple mistake. No, they rang channel seven, channel nine, channel 10. Anyway, I had to go down and, um, my media guy said, look, you better not go down there. They're in a frenzy. You better just send a media spokesman. I said, no, I'll go down. And he, I, I'll never forget the first question. And me, who's responsible? I said, I am. That's what I said. No, I wouldn't talk anymore. Is there going to be a witch hunt? No. What are you going to do? Fix it? Any more questions? <laughs> Guess what? It didn't go to air, but that's not the success of the story. The success of the story, my staff found out that I didn't blame them. They worked through the night and they fixed it for nothing. If I had blamed them, I guess what? And if you keep blaming staff, you think they're going to work for you? 
No, they'll sit on their backside because they're frightened to make a mistake because they're going to get kicked. Nearly two years since the devastating 2011 flood, Ipswich Mayor Paul Pasali has travelled overseas to personally thank those who helped the city recover. He visited organisations in Taiwan and Japan, which donated hundreds of thousands of dollars. First stop, Taiwan and star treatment for an Aussie visitor. There was a TV appearance, a chance to say thanks to the Su Shi Foundation, a Buddhist charity group which donated more than $700,000 to South East Queensland flood victims. We want to say thank you because you've made a big difference. We call them the Blue Angels. They came in, they gave everybody first aid kits, they gave everybody $500 vouchers, blankets, you name it, they were here. Next stop, Japan and a rock star welcome. From Ipswich's sister city, Nerima City. Security. Security. <laughs> Residents there donated $26,000. The mayor says without help like this, Ipswich would still be struggling. Instead, the city is now more than 90% recovered. We're in the position we are today because of the care and compassion of people all over the world. The mayor says the trip changed his life. We have to work harder together, follow the master and create world peace. Thank you. But impressed as he was with Buddhism beliefs, he's still the same old man. Do we get a job? <laughs> Neil Warren, Seven News. Uh, in Auckland, I stopped and said thank you to the uh, to the, the sushi. Had a great day up there with them, and because um, they came in, they rang me in Ipswich, and I connected them with Wellington, and they've done or Christchurch, sorry, and done a fantastic job down there. And they're still sponsoring schools. And if you don't know that organisation, I can tell you. Anybody know? I can tell you, they are absolutely amazing organisation. And, um, I just don't know how they do it. Communities working together. These are some of the things we've got. We've got the pride pin here. I've introduced a thing called the um, Born in Ipswich Certificate, which is absolutely fantastic. And people apply for it. It does all different ages, and it's po so popular. The other ones, are, I wish I was born in Ipswich, so all of you <laughs> are able to get the new one. They're the, um, the med medallions we've done where um, council gives out awards, but what we've got is community awards where different divisions can do their own little awards. So just to say thank you to people. You know, the lady that you see at six o'clock in the morning walking down the street, she's picking up all the papers. You know, we don't recognise those people enough. And it's just good to be able to stop and recognise those people. And they're the, that's the, the backbone of communities. And sometimes we worry about that end when the real things are at this end. And when you do this, guess what happens? It filters up and everybody gets to know everybody. So this, the young, I spent a lot of time with our young people, got the Youth Council, Indigenous Youth Council, and um, I give them grants and funding and, and to um, um, do things. I've got the um, Studio 188 where they've got um, their own youth space and they do multimedia. They have um, film nights and one of the films we're doing, a uh, uh, youth festival, they, and they, the whole theme is about what do you love about your city? And you know what, they go around and, and when young people love their city, the rest will follow. You know, I know when I when I um, bring the young people into a council, I know the questions their parents are asked to ask, especially if they've got anything to do with rates. But a lady rang me up about two weeks ago. She said they were sitting there and their eight-year-old at dinner because they were arguing about the intersection of safety. And this eight-year-old said, Dad, stop arguing. I'm going to ring up my mate, Mayor Paul, and he'll fix it. Get involved with the young people. And that's how they know me. Mayor Paul, I go to the schools, I go to P&Cs and, and get people to know, understand where we're heading. Um, the, the colour runs good, we, um, we've got a fun things and we do a lot of fun things together and you've got to be a person of the people and this is good. The always colourful Ipswich Mayor Paul Pasali got an extra coating of bright today helping to launch a new Ipswich event. The Colour Run is heading to Springfield in June with over 15,000 runners expected to complete the five kilometre course ending in a messy rainbow of powder. Welcome to the Colour Run, we're a happy city and I'm going to be the Mayor of Happy... Yeah! yeah! Part proceeds from the event will be donated to charity. Things you've got to, uh, Once a year in September we do a little thing, we collect a dollar from each person in Ipswich and do a project overseas. We call, and we just put up a little plaque with uh, help a school, and Ipswich, Queensland, Australia cares. That's all we put up there. And we've got many of those projects around the world because I can tell you the way that we treat our, our immigrants and boat people is just crazy. Just absolutely crazy. You've got to be a welcoming country. You've got to be a welcoming community and you've got to be a welcoming city. That's why I have functions where all our um, immigrants, we, we, we have a welcome ceremony. We have a welcome baby ceremony. All the new babies, we, I put my robes on and everything and welcome the new babies. We welcome everybody. It's fantastic. It's good fun. 
Anyway, uh, some people just, oh, I'm just sick and tired of de dealing with, who's sick and tired of dealing with grumpy people? <laughs> Mate, they're only 10, what are you dealing with them? Why are you spending your energy on them? You're neglecting the other 92% of people. That's why I tell that 10%, go away. And that's why I get 90%, because when you try to focus on the 10%, you, you won't get elected. Because guess what? Grumpy people don't vote for you. They never will, they're just grumpy. <laughs> These are some of the things you've got to do as mayor. I've got, that's Jamie Oliver there. The, that's things you've got to do with Rathbay Sambler. I have to go for a ride in a Super Hornet, this F-111. Um, that down the bottom here at Springfield, when they, the, um, everybody said to me, if you ever build those towers, you know, pigs will fly. Well, guess what? I did some pink pigs and we let them, released them on the day pigs did fly. <laughs> Who remembers Jerry Lewis? Hey, Jerry Lewis in Ipswich. Fantastic bloke, there he is, he's wearing the pride. Gina Reinhardt, the Dalai Lama. You know, nobody wanted to meet the Dalai Lama because of the relationship with China, I did. And all the Chinese wanted to get their photo taken with me. It's all rubbish, all this stuff at a political level. We get too involved. The business people don't think political. There's some things about live, working and playing and getting involved. And this is what I love about piano steps and that's what I've been trying to say. Have fun in what you're doing. And have a look at this. This is the fun theory. This is people trying to get people to use the steps instead of the escalator. Instead of belting them over the head, guess what they did? Um, but it's creating fun and you don't have to be, you, you create opportunities for people. Um, Lawrence, I want to say that um, after you knocked me back last year, I did some searching and found out your previous job. And um, it was number 10 after, no one's ever seen this, but this was Lawrence before he got involved in local government, what he really did. And it was, he was a journalist and this was the last job he ever did, no wonder. And so, after weeks of painstakingly searching this rugged area the size of Wales, finally some kind of reward. As behind me, the soldiers gather and burn huge piles of coca leaves and marijuana. <laughs> the drug barons themselves <laughs> may have escaped the net this time, but their evil wares have not. <laughs> And, and I think you better cut that. <laughs> Behind me, smoke, soldiers burning drugs. <laughs> there, soldiers. Behind me. <laughs> Behind me, soldiers. Rugged soldiers, the size of whales, <laughs> burning drugs. Painstakingly. <laughs> Behind me, painstaking barons burning lead drug soldiers in huge piles of whale nets. <laughs> oh. Woo! All right, that's the one, Jerry. Hey! 
Let's go for a curry. Yeah. So, um, you can see he does better in local government. But finally, um, we are what people perceive us to be, not what we think we are. You know, it's about perception. It's about the journey you want to be. I always say to people, remember the future is not some place we're going, but one we're creating. And local government is the best forum for it. And the best way to learn it, as I can finish up now, is by learning from geese. This is one of my favourite clips, and I'll finish with this, and I'll say thank you. <laughs>